Hey, welcome to Out and About with Next Pittsburgh. I'm Boaz. We've got John behind the camera, and we're here in Wilkinsburg because we're visiting Knott's Land. So Nisha Blackwell is the founder of Knott's Land, and at first she just made a bow tie for a, uh, a friend's child for their birthday party. Everyone was asking about it, and fast forward a few years, now they've got a storefront here in Wilkinsburg. She's got a team of sewers who are crafting handmade bow ties, uh, individual ones out of reclaimed upcycled fabric and here's Nisha right here. Nisha, thanks for inviting us into your shop. Hey, thanks for coming over today. So when you say all the fabric from these bow ties are upcycled or reclaimed, like what does that mean? So all of our materials are actually sourced from sources that have already existed before. So, you know, rather it's reclaiming designer discards or working with different manufacturers, upholstery shops, drapery companies, you name it. Anywhere there's reclaimable textiles and materials that can go through our, source, our um, sewing machine, that's what we use to make our bow ties. And let's check out some of these finished bow ties right here. Do you want to show us any favorites? Yeah, so actually I really love, I mean, this color is one of my favorites. And this whole collection for the most part was made from small upholstery book samples. Those are always really exciting because you only get one of one, you know, because it's instead of getting a roll of fabric, you have to use this one small piece of fabric and manipulate it so that it does make the bow tie. So it's like when you'd go to get a, a suit made or something, they had the book of all the little fabric. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Whoa. So it's wild that this is like the only bow tie like that that exists. Yes. Yes. And it's exciting. It's exciting to like always have a new thing to work on and figure out because the chemistry of the bow tie. I mean, I think what we talk about in the shop is like we're not just bow tie makers, but we're working on chemistry of materials and constantly learning new chemistries and new combinations because they're, we're using non-conventional unconventional like materials that don't typically go together if that makes sense yeah. <laughs> and so over here we can see some of these fabrics that you've essentially rescued from prob what probably would have ended up in a landfill yes yes so all of these materials have been reclaimed this is an, an exciting way to display them mostly because there's there are smaller pieces so we've made them more available to public to you know if a customer comes in it's like oh i would like to design a custom blue bow tie we're like oh okay here, here's a perfect place to start, especially if it's just one bow tie, where you can start to really become a part of the design process and understand the range of materials that we use. And again, all of these are the smaller pieces that we use, so it's exciting to showcase that. So like, imagine I come in and I'm like, okay, I love this like shiny, glittery fabric. Like, in how many weeks could I have a custom bow tie? Uh, we usually say for one bow tie, we like a two week turnaround, two to three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, two to three weeks, it depends. We can often include one bow tie into our production cycle a lot easier than some folks call us and say, hey, I need 120 bow ties by next week. And we're like, well, we might have to. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so what kind of places like are getting rid of this fabric? Like where where is this fabric like cut off from? It's everywhere from a pulse. So our very first fabric partner was a company called Tees Upholstery in Lawrence. I remember being in a sender and uh, my mentor had challenged me to look for other fabric sources. He's like, well, if this is going to be the source of how you build your business, you have to have a constant flow of materials. So I, you know, Googled shops, fabric shops around town, Tease Upholstery came up. And I called her on the phone and I was like, hey, you know, I'm working on this business and I'm looking for design sample books. And she, before I can even get it out, she was like, come down here right now and get, I'm literally about to throw away a big bag of sample books. And so a lot of these are materials that have been pulled from those sample books. A couple interior designers who have either downsized or closed or have inventory that are, that's like sort of out of season. This is another source where we kind of go in and they'll give us different small pieces of their materials and a lot of times these are showroom really high quality materials that are being shown to clients to create beautiful things like couches and you know drapes and things that are more interior so it's it's fun to like play with interior fabrics in a different kind of way too yeah it's wild to think that your bow tie is made out of like leftover couch yep Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And speaking of making like hundreds of bow ties, it seems like, you know, post 
vaccination, there's been this wedding boom. Oh, yeah. And I see, like, over here, you've got, like, tons of boxes of matching bow ties ready, presumably yeah. for a wedding. Yes. Yeah, so our wedding clients have been really part of our recovery post-pandemic, right? So as we've been coming through, you know, I'd say May through now, <laughs> we've been just getting an influx of weddings. Obviously, people who had to cancel previously, people are, who are newly engaged and people who are just like, you know, in, somewhere in the process. We got this huge influx, and this order is actually 11 bow ties, 11 suspenders, and 11 pocket squares for one wedding that we were able to do and accomplish here within our team and um, our at-home sewists as well. Wow. So where is this wedding taking place? So this wedding is taking place, interestingly enough, June of 2022, but the groom is gifting them to his groomsmen during the holiday season as a, you know, hey, thank you for being a part of my wedding. Here is your, your <laughs> wares to wear for the wedding. Cool. And working with with all these folks getting married for weddings, like have there been any wild requests or like that have sent you on hunts to like find the right fabric or, or anything sort of crazy? I'd say this was one of our wilder weddings, mostly because they had, you know, very specific colors and they also wanted them to all be a little bit different. And the suspender component, which is something that we haven't done before, I'd say the wildest things are usually the things that we have to figure out how to accomplish. And we want to do that for our grooms and also for the growth of our company, right? So the more we challenge ourselves, the more we're able to provide for future clients. So this client actually was like, hey, we want suspenders to match the bow ties. And we were like freaking out originally, <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And suspender hardware was extremely hard to source. But we had one of our um, at-home sewists who was really excited to take on this project and really do the research and, and the development for the suspenders. And she ended up producing them from home, from start to scratch. That's so cool. Have you encountered... Yeah. <laughs> Have you encountered any groomzillas? Oh, my gosh. That's a joke that I use. Like, cause <laughs> all the time. Oh, all yeah. of the time. Everyone thinks that, like, grooms are just, like, so low-key. But groomzillas are real. Yeah. And <laughs> they want what they want, which is, you know, rightfully so. We're here to give everyone an experience. And especially for people who haven't traditionally seen themselves in the weddings. I know that, you know, culturally and traditionally, the wedding's all about the bride. So we're really excited to give that and to be that special place where you can come get a piece made for either yourself or yourself and the rest of your wedding party that is really made from scratch and designed, co-designed with you, your fiance and your family members. That's so cool. Well, let's walk over to like the, the factory, I guess, essentially yeah. over here. We've got all the sewing machines. Yeah, so this is kind of <laughs> here which is um so here's my station which is usually pretty crazy and messy <laughs> and then here's nicole's station in which we take and most of our assembly happens here um our our work from home sewists will make the parts and pieces and we'll assemble everything in house fun fact about our workstations are that they were tables that were sourced from the film Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. What? Yeah. It, as seen on Netflix. As seen on Netflix. You can see these tables, pull it up, and you can see them in the sewing room there. It was filmed here in Pittsburgh, I believe in Wilkinsburg, actually. And when the filming wrapped up, they didn't have anything to do with these incredible tables that they had built and sourced sewing machines all from all around the country to build the tables. So a week before we opened, we this was all open space. And then literally someone was like, hey, can you use um, some machines? And we thought they were like smaller <laughs> machines. And then they show up with these beautiful tables that um, are really powerful machines. So we kind of don't use them. We, they're just show pieces, but we use them as our workstations as well. That's like a wild Pittsburgh story. It's just like a <laughs> Pittsburgh playwright and... So, Pis so Pittsburgh, August Wilson, I mean, we're all just all interconnected in some way, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. Well, I love that. And, like, sort of speaking of that, like, you've been in the Google campaigns. You did this collab with T-Pain. Your bow ties have been a part of shows at the Carnegie, at the Smithsonian. Like, it seems like Knott's Land has taken you so many crazy places. Like, what are some of the, I guess, personally, what are some of the wildest things that Knott's Land has, like, created or, or places it's brought you? So uh, 
they are, they've all been wild in their own way. Every single time something like the Google campaign or even just like, you know, the t campaign with YouTube where it had, you know, from employee to entrepreneur, they did this big campaign where they had billboards, huge billboards on buildings and on subways and things in, in DC and some parts of New York. And I went, and travel to go see it in person because that's the type of thing you have to see in person. Yeah, when do you get to see that? And experiencing that was strange and just out of body and wild. But also this year, I've kind of been taking some moments to reflect on even the, the things that happen within the community that I think are beautiful, like our sewists and just the growth of our production team and our wonderful team and the expansion of our team and the people that we're able to touch and work with, especially even last year during the mask making and doing that in collaboration with community. So it's, it's everything from, you know, the hyper local to the national things that just all make up these experiences that are mind blowing for me very often. <laughs> Speaking of the mask making, I mean, that was sort of this wild pivot that you did at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. The mask making was, that was a, it feels like a, just a very dark tunnel that we went into to serve the community, but it was like a bad Kennywood ride. Yeah, and it would not stop. It just kept plugging along. It's like, oh, no masks. All right, maybe we're not making masks anymore. Oh, we're wearing masks. Oh, okay, we're making masks again. It was just like this thing where we were all kind of tired of the whole mask thing. And now we're able to participate. You know, it's interesting to even see the progression of that because we started as just grassroots community organizing and making sure that people in the community had masks and had access to masks who didn't have access, you know, elderly folks going to appointments, people who work in warehouses and still had to work through a pandemic. So then we went on to serving customers who wanted to provide them for their organization. So then that's when we were able to start hiring people and paying people to make masks. And so that felt really good to lean on our community and pay people and get people back to work. And then we had um, a wait list of individuals who wanted to buy masks. So then we made retail masks. So there's all these different phases. And now where we are, you know, we're kind of phasing through the retail phase of the masks and just making some cooler ones, some more high-end ones. I'm not wearing a cool one today because this is my work mask, but we've been making like cool ones for weddings and things that include like lace overlays and matching bow tie. Whoa. Yeah, matching bow tie and mask combos and just things that make it fun so people could still just wear your mask because we are still <laughs> recovering. <Yeah. laughs> I've got to ask, there was something on Instagram about Billy Porter recently. So like, what's going on? Yeah, so that was another crazy wild moment. Talk about those moments. Uh, Pittsburgh's own Billy Porter. I got an opportunity to attend a fundraiser dinner in New York with the Andy Warhol. I'm actually on the board of the Andy oh, Warhol cool. Museum. And so I got to attend the fundraiser. And prior to that, I was like putting some feelers out like, hey, you know, I know Billy Porter's a host and I'd like to like meet him. I didn't think that we were going to be placed at the same table, Whoa. though. So that was like just a out of body experience to be at the same table as someone as iconic and legendary as Billy Porter. And I got to go over. I just mustered up the strength to like, you know, just push all my <laughs> fear aside and said, I'm going to go over. I'm going to walk around this table and I'm going to say hi to Billy Porter the most amazingly nice human being I've ever met. Um, he was just so welcoming and so warm and just gave me such an embrace. And I was like, you know, hopefully I can make you a bow tie one day. You're on my muse list <laughs> like we make for you. And so, you know, hopefully we'll see where that goes. I did get a chance to connect with his sister. So hopefully we can like make some cool things happen in the future but just that experience let me know and it let me see myself in someone who come has a similar path comes from the same city comes from similar community and just really to see like where I can go as a you know designer gosh well I'm excited to see what comes of that I hope there's a, a collab soon hopefully if not if not a collab we'll just Send bow ties until there is one. Yeah. Oh, you see him at a Met Gala or something. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Okay, so if, if people want to come by the shop, 
I mean, clearly they can go online to Knott's Land and get stuff from the website, and they can come visit you here too, right? Absolutely. You can shop online 24-7. Our collection online is available there. Um, everything online is also available in the store. We are here Wednesday through Saturday from 11 to 3. Oh, actually, Sundays also now. We're here for holiday season Sundays 11 to 3 as well. Awesome. Were you up for a quick lightning round? Yeah, fire away. Okay, your favorite winter activity in Pittsburgh? My favorite winter activity in Pittsburgh is the Phipps Conservatory Light Show. It's absolutely one of a kind. It's an an experience that I've gone to for many, many years. And, you know, Calvin and I go there and we love it so much. I love that one too. Okay, which celebrity would you most like to see wearing a Knott's Land bow tie? So I'm not going to state the obvious here because we all know that Billy Porter's on my list. <laughs> so I'm going to say Amber Ruffin because every single, per- like everyone, including today, someone said that, wink, wink, that <laughs> we should be uh, figuring out how to reach out to Amber Ruffin because especially with our new longer ties, that well, it would be something. She's also, totally a book. They're not that many. It's interesting because when I was in New York in a taxi cab, she had a commercial that said, hey, I wish that there was like, some place where my bow tie family could go and be like a happy family at the end of the day. And like she, it was like this animation where her bow tie family was like in the audience and they were really happy about it. And people came up to me at the event with Billy Porter, like, Hey, I saw Amber Ruffin and she was talking about her bow tie family. You should totally like <laughs> get into that bow tie family. <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, well, hopefully soon. Hopefully. Do you have a favorite holiday movie? My favorite holiday movie, oh, man, I'm so, so old school. It's going to have to be The Christmas Story. Yeah, it's, that's a great it's choice. so old school. I wish I had a more exciting one because, you know, it's pretty old. I've been watching it every year since I was really small. Well, that's a good pick. A good pick. Okay, favorite <laughs> Pittsburgh restaurant. Favorite Pittsburgh restaurant, another extremely hard question. I'm just going to say the the one that comes like top of mind is one of my absolute favorites is Casa Brazil. Um, I love the food, the energy, the the explosion of flavors. Um, another one is Gerasoli's. That's another amazing uh, Italian, just super good. I'm trying to think. I think those are my top ones right at this moment. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm craving. <laughs> Favorite music to sew to? Favorite music to sew to would be, if I'm not listening to Masterclass, which I've been listening to a lot of Masterclass lately, um, if I'm not listening to Masterclass, I'm usually sewing to either Women of Jazz. We have a Women of Jazz playlist. Um, I think that's actually available on our uh, in our bio section. I think I tagged that because it's one of my favorites. It's actually the shop playlist as well. Or just old school R&B. It's classic. And if you could make edible bow ties, what would they taste like? If I can make edible bow ties, that would be really, really hard to say what they taste like because they're all all different, (laughs) right? Like, man, some of them would be sweet, marshmallowy, roasted bow ties, and others would be, like, spicy, I think there would definitely be a spicy flavor somewhere in there. Um, Savory, like mashed potato kind of savory. There's, I mean, really, you could cover the whole palette with just one collection of bow ties. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Nisha. You can find Knott's Land online or here in Wilkinsburg. And I feel like we should end with just a little bit of this dog snoring, maybe. Please do.